everybody, it's Mary Ann and Dawn and Skeeter, our Mississippi kite, coming to you from Houston Audubon's Raptor and Education Center right here in Southeast Houston. And today we're going to talk all about hawks and we're going to share a fun book with you and we hope you follow along along with Skeeter here. Um, Skeeter is about seven years old. She was found in Corpus Christi, Texas when she was about four months old. She was on her first migration mm -hmm. all the way down to South America. Mississippi kites are one of our long distance migrants. They spend the summers up here in North America and they winter in South America. They eat grasshoppers, lizards, dragonflies, cicadas, um, tree frogs, and their prey supply is really only available right. in the late spring and summer months. So they've got to make that epic journey all the way down to South America and they face a lot of dangers Absolutely. along the way like Skeeter did, you know, power lines, getting hit by cars, deforestation, all kinds of issues. So she helps us teach about how important these birds are and the role that they play in the natural environment. So we hope you'll follow along on this fun book all about hawks. This is a book called The Truth About Hawks mm. by Maxwell Eaton III. These are all hawks. When we think about hawks, it's actually kind of an umbrella word for eagles, falcons, kites, beautios, exhibitors, birds that you might be familiar with like red-tailed hawks, um, bald eagles. They are, come in a great variety of sizes and shapes as we're going to see, but they all are kind of in this whole family that we call hawks. And there's over 230 different wow. species. That's a lot. Which is a lot. The hawk family, yeah, of course, in, includes birds of all different sizes and shapes. Here are just a few illustrated in this book. Now here at the Raptor Center, we have another kite, a swallow-tailed kite. Her name is Luna, and she lives with Skeeter, our Mississippi mm -hmm. kite. Um, and again, these kites are birds, these two in particular, that travel all the way down to South America for the winter. In the center of the page, the sharp-shinned hawk and the cooper's hawk are in a group of hawks we call exhibitors. And they have short wings and long tails built to fly through a forest and catch other birds. And you have to be pretty agile to be able to do that. Um, they also figured out how to hunt for birds yeah. at our bird feeders. Fly through bird feeder. <laughs> That's right, the, fl the fly through. Yep. Um, catching doves and jays and cardinals at backyard bird feeders. Hawks are found on every continent except for Antarctica. Antarctica is a pretty rough place to try to survive. And there are some birds that we think of as related but aren't really truly related as much as we thought they were in the past. New world vultures yes. like turkey yeah. vultures and black vultures actually more closely related to storks. Falcons, scientists have determined, are more closely related to parrots. And of course, owls, Well, uh, they're perfect. Yes. Closer to perfection. Yes. We love owls. Most hawks share five features that make them deadly hunters. Remember, these are top predators. They're called birds of prey, raptors, and the word raptor means to seize or grasp because one of those features are their very strong powerful talons that they use mm -hmm. to catch their prey. They have sharp hooked beaks for eating and tearing up their prey but it's these powerful talons that they use to actually capture their prey. They have incredible eyesight. Many hawks, eagles can see eight times farther than a human so they can spot their prey like a mile away which is Pretty amazing. Far. Their large wings and specialized feathers help them to fly. Just like and, that. <laughs> just like that. Like she wishes. Here, like we're gonna she, give, yeah. Maybe she wants a snack. I think she wants a snack while she's reading. Um, everyone likes a snack mm. while they're reading. Um, these, their large wings help them to glide and ride on thermals, which are pockets of warm air that rise from the ground when the sun comes out. And they can kind of take a ride, it's like an invisible elevator, and fly for long long periods of time without having to flap. That helps them to save energy. Their tails help them to steer. Mm -hmm. um, Mississippi kites can do barrel rolls up in the sky. They use that tail like a rudder to actually steer and maneuver. So they have incredible flight abilities 
And some birds like Mississippi kites can actually capture their prey in the air or just snatch it off of vegetation and keep on flying, eat while they're flying, which is a pretty good trick. <laughs> that's another flyby. <laughs> another flyby, that's right. A fly through. Fly through. Not a drive through, a fly through. <laughs> You're exactly right. Hunting starts with watching for prey while flying high in the air, low over the ground, or watching on a perch. And we've had some cloudy weather here in Houston, um, and on cloudy days, a lot of hawks will sit on telephone poles mm -hmm. because the without the sun, there aren't thermals rising pockets of warm air yeah. for them to catch a ride on. Typically, you see like those red tail hawks or red shouldered mm -hmm. hawks just sitting on, mm -hmm. yeah hunting from the perch. Some hawks, this is kind of cool and weird, some hawks can see ultraviolet light, which humans can't see, and small rodents when they're running through the grasses actually leave a urine trail, trail that glows. Ooh. Um, we can't see it, but the hawks can, and that kind of guides them. So if we had an ultraviolet flashlight, would yeah, we be probably, able to see absolutely. it? Absolutely. Wow. Hawks are diurnal, which means they're active during the daytime when we're active. So, you know, every day is a good chance to see some kind of diurnal raptor, pretty much no mm -hmm. matter where you live. Mm -hmm. Once a meal is spotted, many hawks will tuck in their wings and, and dive, or what we call a stoop, straight down to catch their prey. Golden eagles have been clocked at over 200 miles an hour, peregrines over 200 mm -hmm. miles an hour in their stoop. Um, so they use kind of a surprise attack to catch their prey. Mm -hmm. And Mississippi kites like Skeeter here will catch their prey out of the air or off a, a tree branch and just keep on flying. Mm -hmm. And they can eat while they're flying, which handy. not too many birds can do. At the last second, the hawk will open its wings, and that's how it puts on the brakes, swing its feet and talons forward and grab its victim. Mm -hmm. Some hawks eat just about anything they can catch. They're not very well, that's good. particular, but others have a more particular list of prey that they seek mm -hmm. out, like snail kites who actually hunt for snails, freshwater apple snails in places like Florida. And they actually have a specialized beak that enables them to pull the snail out of its shell. That's snail. a bit harder when you're more specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, eagles, of course, are famous for catching fish. And we have a lot of bald eagles right here in Houston, Texas mm -hmm. in the winter and spring nesting because of all the bayous, Fine. the rivers and streams that we have, fresh water. They do really well here. And then when it starts getting hot, they'll move north for the summer and return again in the winter to nest. Golden eagles, get this, have been seen dragging and knocking sheep off of cliffs Whoa. to the rocks below. To, to dine on them. That's kind of rough. That is on that sheep, yeah. <laughs> Along with hunting, finding a mate and raising babies takes up much of a hawk's year. It all begins with a little showing off. Many hawks will have a, a courtship display mm -hmm. to attract a mate or to just cement, um, reinvigorate that bond because most of them mate for life. Right. Um, so they go through the courtship display, even though they're mated for life, just to kind of reinvigorate their relationship. Um, and the, the courtship display is a symbol of how strong they are and healthy and skilled hunter. Mm -hmm. And that will really go a long way to having a successful family. After a hawk has found a mate, it is time to build a nest. Nests are usually made of sticks, twigs, lined with softer material. A lot of kites like Mississippi kites, swallowtail kites will use Spanish moss, which oh, hangs from the, found from the trees, yeah. which we have a lot of. Mm -hmm. In their nests, eagles like to build their big heavy stick nests up in the tops of pine trees. And from the outside, it looks like it's made of just big sticks, but inside they'll put it's a lot soft. of turf that they'll pick up off the ground to make it nice and soft and comfortable. Most nests are built at the top of tall trees or on cliffs, but there are a few hawks that will sometimes build their nest on the ground if they're living in remote, you mm. know, safe places. Mm -hmm. Once the nest is made, it's ready for eggs, and a female will lay anywhere from one to five eggs, depending on the species. And you know how many eggs an eagle usually? Usually it's two. Yep. On a, maybe a good year, if they think there's going to be a lot of food, three, but two. Typically two. Mm -hmm. um, same with golden eagles. 
bald eagles and golden eagles, um, sometimes they can only raise one chick. If the competition mm -hmm. is tough and the food mm -hmm. supply isn't that great, there can be some competition among siblings in the nest. About a month after the eggs are laid, the chicks will hatch and they are hungry and ready for <laughs> food. And it takes, you know, the, the male <laughs> and then both the male and the female bringing in a constant supply to raise those two. kids. Within a few months, the chicks are ready to go. They've got their flight feathers. They've got to practice though before they leave. That, that period when they start to leave the nest is called fledging. And this is a really dangerous time yeah. in their life. If they fall from the nest, <clears throat> they're at risk from being caught by other predators like coyotes or fox or whatever. So it's really important that they have a stable nest where they can jump around yeah. and exercise and build up those flight and feathers. They also can just hurt themselves by falling out yeah, of that nest. Exactly. And that's, you know, where a lot of birds end up going to rehab centers, right. or rescue centers. Right. For many hawks, winter brings a big choice. Some will stay, whereas others make that long distance migration like the Mississippi right. kites do yeah. <laughs> to warmer climates. Mississippi kites go all the way down to South America. Um, for the winter, again, their, their prey supply pretty much disappears. Yeah. Um, they use the sun, stars, wind patterns, the landscape. Uh, mountains and coastal areas as kind of a compass mm -hmm. to help them find their way. Um, some hawks will spend several months migrating, like Swainson's hawks, migrating 12,000 miles um, a year. They fly in large groups that we call kettles. We have some good spots on mm -hmm. the coast here in Texas mm -hmm. where we can go bird watching in the fall and see you know, these large groups of hawks migrating mm -hmm. all together. Some hawks go it alone, but many will go in these large kettles of mixed species. Probably feeling species. safe and say, hey, mm -hmm. if you know where you're going, I'm going with exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> um, they may fly fast, far, and high, but even hawks are threatened by human-caused problems on the ground, like Skeeter here, who hit a power line. There's pesticides and chemicals all across there their habitats and their ranges, loss of habitat. Loss. If you fly all the way to South America and your habitat has been wiped out. Um, or if you come back here and they've lost their mm -hmm. habitat where they nested the year before. So these dangers are real. And just by you guys learning about hawks and understanding them and knowing that parks, um, backyards, wildlife refuges, very important. Um, these mm -hmm. habitats are really important to these birds that are thus important to us because they play a very important role as key predators in their habitat, yeah. top predators, and we need them around. So by us protecting and caring for their habitat, it's all about the we're, balance. We're helping them mm -hmm. out. Um, you know, so next time you're outside, watch for hawks, maybe do a little research on your own, get some good books out of the library. Um, and of course, come and visit us here mm -hmm. at Houston Audubon's Raptor and you know, Education Center and learn more about the hawks that we share with everybody that comes to visit and we share with um, schools and libraries yeah. and stuff like that. And I think Skeeter was very engrossed in that book. She, she did she, not move I know, one bit really, and I think she was reading it just to see if the facts were right. I, what do you say Skeeter? Yeah, he, he, I think she pipped at me. So, yeah, yeah, I think she Let's get everyone a good look at those beautiful eyes, their sharp talons. For a bird that's really just gray and black and white, she's a gorgeous, yes. gorgeous raptor. Yeah. And they are, they're on their way back. Some have already arrived. We'll have more Mississippi kites mm -hmm. um, coming up to Houston, Texas, where they'll be nesting in city parks and golf courses, hunting all those small critters, and we can enjoy them throughout the summertime. So we hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about hawks today with Dawn and myself and Skeeter. And we hope to see you real soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.